Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Learn Swift. In this episode, we're going to go into the try, do, and catch blocks. Three things that were added to Swift 2.0. Let's get started. Now what the do, try, and catch statements allow you to do is better error handling in Swift, which was not supported before. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our own our own error types by declaring an enum. And so we're going to make an enum and we'll call it um, my error. And it, for us to make an enum, we for us to make our own errors, we need to subclass error type, which is a Swift class, which is a Swift class protocol already made for us. And if you command click on error type, you'll notice nothing is there. It's just the public protocol with nothing in it, that's because we don't have to define anything. But to declare our own error, error types, our enums must inherit from it. Okay, so then we can simply name our, we can make different cases of different errors. So I can make case user error, case network error, and you can define whatever you want, and you can make as many cases as you want, or as little cases as you want. Um, random error, okay. So now, once we've, since now we've defined our own errors, inheriting through error type, we can now raise them. So then we can write our own functions, and depending on our own conditions, we can raise these. So I'm just going to make a function here. I'm going to call it f, and this function is going to be very simple. It's not going to take any parameters, and it's going to have the throws keyword after the parameter listing, which is none, and it would go after, we'll make a return a string. It would go after the ret you return something. And so I'm going to make this very easy. And I'm going to make it print um, first thing. And then I'm going to have it print second thing. I'm going to make it do nothing really big here. And then I'm going to have it throw an error. And the reason why I wrote throws there is because I'm saying, OK, this has a potential to throw an error. And in our function, we're actually going to make it so it throws an error every single time. So I'm going to make it throw my error dot random error. So it's going to throw an error. And then we'll have it return uh, function done. Okay? Boom. Seems pretty good. And we'll have a print statement here. Print third thing. And what I want to show you guys here is I'm getting an error here. Let me see if it still lasts. Oh, I'm sorry. The throws function goes after, goes before the return type. So there you go. Okay, and I'm getting a warning here, and it says code after throw will not be executed. And that is very true. So this throw statement will automatically result in an error, which I must cope with whenever I call the function f. So in some situations, I could have an, I could have an if statement over this throw to only have it executed in a certain place. But in, in my scenario, the throw statement is always executing, okay? So now we're going to call function f right here. And function f really doesn't do anything, so I can just call f here. Okay? And let's see if I can run my application. I can't because I get an error. And it's saying call can throw but is not marked with try and the error is not handled. Okay? So I'm getting an error because I need to handle the possible errors that function f can give. And in our scenario, function f will always give an error. So we do this by surrounding it with a do block. And then around that do block, we can put a try. So any, everything we put in a do block usually should be, with it, should be, could be an error. And I get another error. I get another error here that says errors thrown from here are not handled. And that's true. So anything within the do block can be, a, can be when we call a function that can possibly throw an exception. And so what we need to do is we use the do block with the catch block to handle these functions. And so the catch block will now hander, handle all our scenarios where things are wrong. So maybe a variable, a common error, a pretty simple error is let's say you have, um, you're, you're setting up a calculator, you're setting up a factorial calculator. And so when you give something a factorial, it goes, whatever you give it three, it goes three, it goes three times two times one all the way down. And let's say you give it a negative number where you can't take the factorial of a negative number. So that would be an error, right? And that's something you could check for. So 
in this catch method, we would reset the variables to be in the right order. So for instance, maybe we'd make that variable one, or we would print a message out to the user in the case where that exception was caught and say, please try again, please print another number. So in the catch block is when you handle the error. So I'm going to try F, I'm going to catch it, and that's it for now. Okay, so now I'm going to run this application by hitting Command R. And what really we're going to look for here is we're going to look inside the log here. The log is going to be very helpful. Okay, so we got first thing, second thing, and error handled. So what happened is our view loaded up and our, our function view did load automatically got called for us. And then I ran F. And in F, I printed out the first thing, printed out the second thing, and then threw my error. I threw my random error. Then, so then execution was stopped. Um, print, third thing was never printed, and return, and function done was never returned. The code jumped out of function F and went straight to the catch block. And then it printed error handled. And then after that, it finished executing because there was nothing else to be done. Okay? So that is pretty nice and dandy. Something I also can do is I can also have multiple try catch blocks. So I can have a catch block for if a random error was thrown. So I can catch blocks that handle different errors. So I can have one that is the user error. And then if I just have a default catch block like I had before, that will handle any error. Okay? Any error. So that's pretty cool. So then I can, if different things happen, I can handle it differently, which is really nice. The last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is try with an exclamation mark. So, for instance, let's say you had a function, you had a function that someone else wrote that throws an exception. It throws an illegal number exception if you put in greater than zero. But in your function, in your application, you already check if somebody puts something less than zero or puts, in, puts a number less than zero. So instead of checking that, you don't really care of doing that. So instead you do try with an exclamation mark. And what that does is it forces the function to go through. So if there is an error, then your then your application will just crash, as you'll see when I run it here. Because it's just going to, it's not going to go through the catch block. It's going to say, okay, I trust you. I trust this function not to return an error. But instead, you did return an error. So now, since you've broken my trust, I'm going to disable the application. I'm going to fail. So it says, fader error, try, exclamation mark, expression, unexpectedly raised an error. So use try, exclamation mark, when you're expecting something that throws, not to raise an error. And I believe you can also... Because of this, if you do try with an exclamation mark to run the, you can still run the application without any do or catch block because you're, you're with that's, that's the point of the exclamation mark. You're saying, I trust this application. But since our function always throws an error, it always will fail. Just something to keep in mind, guys. I hope you have a great day and the best day of your lives.